camera, Zola. I want you to look at the camera and I want you to tell everyone that you're a very, very bad spider because you kicked your itchy butt hairs at your mother. She did that. I was just trying to give her food, seriously. The audacity, the audacity. Welcome to my life as a crazy bug lady. If you couldn't tell by that intro, um, that's what I am. And today, Azula, my beautiful Brachypelma erratum female, has graced us with her presence because we are gonna talk about tarantulas today. And I do love me some tarantulas. So I am filming in a different spot. Normally I'm in front of my bed, but today we are in front of my closet. My closet is a shower curtain because I am an adult and I like spiders. So without any further ado, let's jump into today's video. Did I even tell you what it's about? <laughs> it's about what you should know before getting into tarantulas. Now I am heavily into tarantulas and there's no turning back for me because I am currently sitting in a room surrounded by tarantulas. There's a tarantula on my sweater. I have a tarantula tattooed on my arm. I am in deep. But for everyone who's now getting into the hobby of collecting tarantulas, whether you want to have a lot or you just want to have, you know, one or a couple, I have some tips that I think everyone should know who's going to be getting into tarantulas before they start their collection or their journey. And I think these things are going to be helpful. So I really hope that you enjoy and you learn something. And if not, um, then you can tell me that you didn't learn something. Um, cause you know, any comment is a good comment in this channel because we're, we're desperate. Let's jump right in to the things you should know before getting into tarantulas. So the first thing, wow, I put a real bummer as the first thing. Let's just get it out of the way. Yeah, let's get this one out of the way because this one's kind of hard to wrap your head around. Number one is your tarantula doesn't love you. Now this one is really hard to accept, but tarantulas, they don't love you. They don't really recognize that you care for them. They have a very simple primitive mind. And so your tarantula is not going to have a bond with you. Your tarantula doesn't want to spend time with you. They don't want you to hold them. They just kind of want to do their own thing. So I like to think of them kind of like fish. They're beautiful to look at. They're fun and rewarding to take care of. But at the end of the day, you don't really, you don't need to have a same kind of connection that you would with your dog or cat with them because that's just not the kind of pet that they are. And that's fine, yes. If you are holding and petting or spending time with your tarantula, just know that it is for your benefit. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, don't hold them, don't touch them. If you are doing it, just know that you're doing it for your benefit, that it's not for the tarantula's benefit. That you need to take the steps that you need to keep them safe and be careful and cautious while handling them because it is for your own benefit and not for theirs. They do have a, I mean, I feel like they have a personality. Like all of my tarantulas are unique and I love them individually for who they are. But the point is that, you know, if you want a pet that's gonna love you and recognize you and that you can spend time with and cuddle, you know, maybe a tarantula is not for you. But, you know, I have my cat who I love and I cuddle with and pet all the time and she fills that void for me so that I can keep all of my other pets and, you know, admire them from afar <laughs> because, you know, they aren't going to develop an attachment to you. That doesn't make them not good pets. They're still amazing pets and um, I'm sorry that I started off with a huge bummer. That was a bummer. That's <laughs> Hopefully number two won't be so bad. Okay, number two. So this one is kind of obvious, but I feel the need to point it out because this is something that I see a lot of people on tarantula forums kind of running into and something that I kind of have run into as well. And that is that if you are getting slings, which are baby tarantulas, spiderling, sling for short, keep in mind that they do grow. <laughs> and I know this sounds obvious because it is like, you know, it's a baby creature, it's going to grow but 
you have to keep this in mind because it can be so easy to collect slings because you know you get excited and you're like oh i'm gonna get this one i'm gonna get that one oh there's a sale over here oh you know buy this many i get some free over here oh like oh i want this species get it here and then suddenly you have all these slings i've seen people say they have like 50 slings and you you know it can be fun and it's easy to collect slings because like let me show you these are some sling enclosures that i have and like as you can see these are tiny like they take up no space like i can have 20 30 slings easy and it's not going to take up any space but you have to keep in mind that this little teeny tiny tarantula is eventually going to be a big tarantula and you're gonna have to keep it in a big home and feed it a lot of food and you know it's gonna be a lot more than it was when it was a tiny sling so you know you can end up with a lot of slings but you know keep in mind that as they grow you're gonna have to do several rehousings of each sling um, you know, it's not just going to go from this into its forever home, you know, something like we have Miss Azula in and, you know, she's in here in this container and, you know, there's going to be some houses, sizes along the way that you're going to have to put them into because, you know, as they grow, they need to move into a little bit of a bigger home each step. So you will need to keep that in mind because you know, it can be easy to collect the slings. I know, I collected a lot of slings in the beginning. So many that I actually ended up rehousing some or rehoming some to some local hobbyists who were so excited to have them. And I was really excited to give them to them. But yeah, I realized that, you know, I kind of went overboard and it happens for a lot of people. So, you know, just keep that in mind before you go amassing all these slings that, you know, in a few years, you're gonna have to put them in a big home and, you know, it sounds obvious. I know it's so obvious, but it's like those little things. Sometimes you just need someone to tell you because you're like, oh yeah, like I knew that, but I didn't think of that. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> so number three kind of goes hand in hand with um, number two. And that is that um, there is no rush to build your collection. There's no rush. You know, you have all the time in the world to build your collection. And getting into tarantulas can be really exciting and it's addicting. Like I will tell you now, if you have not started getting tarantulas yet, it's addicting. Like you'll get a couple and you'll think, oh, I'm gonna be good for a while. Nope, nope. You're gonna be placing that next order right away. I promise you, I promise it's gonna happen. You're gonna get a couple tarantulas, you're gonna want more. And then you're gonna find more species that you want and you're gonna want that. And then you're gonna, you know, see that they have a female and you're gonna want the female. It's like, it's, it's easy to get a lot and so, you know, you just have to keep in mind that there's no rush to build your collection. You can take your time. You can see people in other places, like other people in other forums or other, you know, Facebook groups or whatever, saying that they have all these tarantulas and it can be easy to feel like, oh, I need to have that many too. But that's not the case. You know, everyone builds their collection at different speeds. I've seen people who got a hundred tarantulas in two months of keeping spiders. Like, I'm serious. I've seen these things online. And then I also have seen people who have had just two tarantulas for 10 years and both are perfectly valid ways to keep tarantulas. You know, you can have a bunch right away. You can do that if you want, if you have the means to do so and you wanna do so, do so. Yeah, that's fine. If you wanna take your time, that's fine. There is no pressure to rush your collection and there's also no pressure to jump into keeping harder to keep species, to keep rare species, to keep um, highly venomous species. There's no rush, you know? For me, I thought I was even moving fast, but I didn't start keeping old world tarantulas until I had been collecting tarantulas for an entire year because I wanted to make sure that I felt really confident with rehousings, with feedings, with care, with just everything that I needed to know before I moved into taking care of tarantulas that moved faster and were more venomous. I just, I needed that time. And I'm not ashamed of it, you know? Like, I am not. Uh, for a while I was and I felt like, you know, oh, I need to keep old world tarantulas or I'm not a legitimate tarantula keeper. But that's not the case, you know? Like, if you don't want to keep old worlds ever, you don't have to. You don't have to do it. There's no pressure. You can do whatever you want. You can build your collection as fast or slow as you want. Just keep in mind that, you know, it's your collection, it's your hobby, it's your life, and it's for fun for you. So, you know, do at the end of the day what you want to do, what you have the means to do, because, you know, it can be easy in this community to feel a little bit pressured to, you know, get a quick, quick get a lot of tarantulas or get 
venomous tarantulas or get the fastest tarantulas, but you know, it's, it's whatever works for you. There's no pressure. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> So let's go to number four. Number four is a, number four is kind of a big bummer too. Dang. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but you need to know these things. And number four is that as someone who keeps tarantulas, you will have some creature die on you. It will happen. Especially with slings. You know, tarantulas have a lot of babies at a time. They have, you know, hundreds, lots of babies. And that's because a lot of the babies don't make it to adulthood. You know, just due to different factors, they all don't make it. So if you have some slings, if you have some tarantulas and you know, one passes away on you, it's okay, it happens. You don't need to hate yourself. You don't need to be hard on yourself. You know, you just need to learn from your mistake and move forward because it is common for these creatures to die. And there are certain species, like I know keeping avicularia slings can often um, pass away while they're young. It's just something that happens and nobody's perfect and we're still learning more and more every day about keeping tarantulas and you know the hobby of keeping tarantulas. So if you lose a tarantula, it's not the end of the world. Try to figure out what happened, what went wrong, and go from there because Every step, everything we learn just makes us better tarantula keepers. And you know, it can be hard. Like I've lost, I've lost tarantulas. I'm not gonna sit here and say that I haven't because I see people also on the forums and Facebook and whatnot who are like, oh, I've never lost anything. I've never lost anything. And maybe that's true, but you know, I think it's important to be honest and be real and let people know that it's okay if something dies in your care, it happens. You know, these are not cats and dogs. These are not, you know, normal pets. Like they're, it happens. I don't know what else to say other than that it happens. And if it happens to you, do not beat yourself up unless you did something really dumb and maybe a little bit, but don't beat yourself up. Try to remain calm, figure out what went wrong and then learn and move on from there. So if you think you may have a hard time coping with something like this, then do it with that what you will. Do what you will with that. Do. Take that and run however you'd like with it. What's wrong with me? The point is, I just want you to know that it will happen. Don't feel bad. Okay. Anyways, let's move on to the fifth thing I think you should know before getting into tarantulas. And that is that there are many different ways to keep tarantulas. There are, you know, if you are on YouTube, which obviously you are because you're watching this, long day at work, sorry, then you'll see that there are so many different ways that people are keeping tarantulas. And I recently watched a video from Tarantula Cat, who is an amazing tarantula YouTube on here, YouTuber on here. And um, she talked about, you know, the different, how there's a big difference with different people keeping their tarantulas in different ways and how, you know, there can be a lot of hate towards certain people because of the way they keep their tarantulas when in reality, just different things work for different people. And I'm of course, of course there are um, exceptions to this rule. Like, you know, if you're keeping a big tarantula in a little tiny box, obviously no, you know, no good. Or, you know, if you're keeping your tarantula with no substrate or something, that would be a no go. But, you know, there are many different substrates substrates that people use, you know, some people use just cocoa fiber, some people use reptis oil, some people use creature, creature something, you know, there's a lot of different substrates. And if one person uses this one, it could work well for them. Some people use another one works well for them. A big well-known channel on this YouTube land is Exotic Slayer, and he keeps his tarantulas in a very specific way that are very different from a lot of other tarantula YouTubers. And so because he is so very popular, he has millions and millions of followers or subscribers, and he's going big, you know? But he does keep his tarantulas different than a lot of other people. So, you know, if someone would watch one of his videos, they would say, oh wow, you know, he keeps his tarantula like this. He keeps a big water dish and he, you know, touches them with a little blade of grass or, you know, he feeds them roaches. He feeds mostly roaches and, 
you know, some people feed crickets. I feed mostly mealworms and superworms because it works best for me. It doesn't mean that anyone's doing anything wrong. It just means there's different ways of doing things and that's okay, you know, it's like all good. But you know, just keep that in mind. There are different ways of doing things and you'll find what works best for you through trial and error, through experimenting, through learning new things and moving forward. You'll learn different things. You'll find what works for you. You know, I've learned a lot of things. I've changed a lot of things throughout the, the time I've kept tarantulas. You know, I've changed how I house them. I've changed the substrate. I've changed what type of water dish, what type of hide I use. You'll learn, you'll grow, and you'll see what works for you. And just, you know, keep in mind that if someone does something their way, doesn't mean you have to do it their way. You know, there's a lot of different ways to do things. And there's a lot of different room for interpretation. So as long as you've done the research and you know what the tarantula needs to be happy and, you know, have a good quality life and you're providing those things, then, you know, there's room to figure out what works best for you in your life, in your home, in your whatever, you know, just find what works and just understand that there's a lot of different ways to do things. And yeah, so I think that's it. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you're thinking about getting into tarantulas, I say do it. You will be, I mean, I love it. I will never look back now that I've gotten into tarantulas and you know, go for it. Take that step. Take that plunge. This is your sign. This video is your sign that it's time to jump in. And if you already have jump in, jumped in, then welcome. You know, I'm happy you're here. I'm happy that we can all have this, you know, tarantula loving hobby. And it's just, it's really fun. It's rewarding. There's a lot to love about it. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. <laughs> please like, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. It helps me out a lot. And um, tell your friend, tell your grandma, tell your enemies, tell your dog. You know, you can put my video on for him and, and just leave your dog watching it and walk away. It's okay. It still counts. It still counts as a view and I will take it. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you're having a great day. I'm going to show you Azula again. She's just here hanging out and yeah. That's all. That's really all. I don't know how to end.